I'm Robert Nelson. Welcome to lesson two of the My Brother's Keeper Entrepreneurship Training Series. That's right. This is lesson two, and I'm so excited to get started. Here we go. What we've been doing throughout the course of this program is we establish a protocol so that we have consistency with each one of the sections, and you can remember the concepts that we deal with. The basic MBK introductory protocol is this. What is MBK? My Brother's Keeper. When was it founded? In 2014. By who? Barack Obama. For what? To help young men of color transition from one life stage to another. Now, in the original document, it mentioned that it was to help young men overcome opportunity gaps. And that's why we're dealing with entrepreneurship so that you can learn how to create your own opportunities. But let's continue with this process. Because as you know, we have not rules, but agreements. These are things that you agree to comply with while you engage in this process. Agreements are these. Confidentiality. What's said in here stays in here. Now that doesn't mean that you can't share any of the things that you learn with other people. What it means is if somebody shares something with you that's intimate or something personal, you don't want to put their business in the street. Punctuality. Start on time and end on time. That'll develop a degree of respect for doing business particularly because time is money. Third, no put downs. Not only do not put other people down, don't criticize them, don't uh, discourage them, but you need to build other people up. Compliment them, encourage them at every opportunity. Four, no right and wrong. It's not saying that nothing is right and wrong, but it's just understanding that you need to have an open mind. Some of the things you know today, you didn't know years ago. And some of the things you're gonna learn today will change the way that you think about things tomorrow. Five, no glorifying drugs, alcohol, or weapon. Anything that's negative or has negative impact on people's life and on our community, we don't wanna stole those things because those aren't virtues. Those are detriments. So we're not gonna glorify that in these sessions. Six, feelings, get in touch with your feelings. We normally go around when we open with a one word check-in so that we can find out how you feel. And you need to really take a close look at why you feel the way you feel and what could be done to make you feel the way that you want to feel. So get in touch with your feelings. Seven is respect. That means if I call a number seven and I raise my hand, that means you close your mouth, turn to whoever's got their hand raised, that's called the number seven, give them your undivided attention and respect. And anybody has the right to call the number seven. Eight, I statements, which simply means that you don't make an exclusive statement saying that this may apply to everyone in this room or everyone in this race or everyone in this family. Say, this is what I think, what I feel, what I believe. I statements, no blame. That means each one of us is responsible for the outcomes that we produce in our life. It's not our parents' fault. It's not our siblings' fault. It's not the government fault. It's not religion's fault. It's not the teacher's fault. It's our responsibility. 10, take care of yourself. That means maintain good hygiene, eat healthy food, maintain good health, stay away from the COVID. We're in this COVID pandemic situation right now. Uh, this is being recorded, so the situation might not be the same, but the principles are the same. Always take care of yourself. So I refer to the rule of the mass rule, which means when you're flying on a plane, they always tell you that before you try to help somebody else, make sure you put your mask on first, because if you fall out, you're no good and you're no good to anybody else. So take care of self. 11 is amnesty. That means forgiveness because there will be friction along the way. There may be disagreement and contention, but unless you forgive and move forward, you'll allow those tendencies to pile up inside of you and it'll create anxiety and will restrict your ability to think creatively. So amnesty, forgive, let go and move on. 12, be your brother's keeper. Don't just talk about being your brother's keeper. Actually be concerned about the well-being of your brother, so much so that you will do something to assist your brother when they're in need. These are the agreements. So now we move to the learning process. And I'm probably not going to continue to repeat this once you guys start to get this ingrained into your thinking. What we do is a process called call and response, which means we give you the information and you give it back to us. And you do this verbatim. What does verbatim mean? If you remember from last week, it means word for word. What does verbatim mean? Word for word. 
Why? Because space repetition is the mother of skill. The more you do something, the same thing over and over again, what happens is that your reticular activator in your mind is a mechanism in your mind, it takes over and you don't have to think about doing it anymore. It is automatic. So you wanna put these things on automatic pilot and you do that through auto suggestion, which means the more you go over this information or any information for that matter, the more familiar you become with it, the easier it's gonna be for you to apply to your life on a regular basis. You train your subconscious mind. So let's deal with the MBK entrepreneurship protocol. Why MBK entrepreneurship? Because it is our responsibility to create our own jobs and businesses. Why MBK entrepreneurship? Because it is our responsibility to create our own jobs and businesses. What is an entrepreneur? A person that takes the risk of owning and operating his or her own business. What is an entrepreneur? A person that takes the risk of owning and operating his or her own business. What does it take to be a successful entrepreneur? Buy low, sell high, and keep good records. Say it with me. What's it take to be a successful entrepreneur? Buy low, sell high, and keep good records. How do you get rich? I was born rich. And when you say it, you need to say it with your spirit, with enthusiasm, with pride, with confidence, because that's who you are. We're going to continue to move on through this session. What I like to do is to make sure that we actually review what things we touched on during the last week's session so that we keep it fresh on the forefront of our minds. And the more we keep it fresh in our minds, the more we retain it, the more we'll be able to apply it to our lives. Last week, we learned what is an investment. An investment is money that is spent to make money. What's an investment? Money that is spent to make money. What are two types of investments? Debt investment and equity. What are two types of investments? Debt and equity. What is a debt investment? A percentage of the loan. What is an equity investment? Ah, oh, do you remember? <laughs> it's a piece of the action. So what are two types of investment? Debt and equity. What's a debt investment? A percentage of the loan. What is an equity investment? A piece of the action. We're going to keep moving forward. So today, we're going to touch on what was last week's exercise, because each week, what we're going to do is have one lesson, one example, real life example, and one exercise to perform. Last week, what we did is we voted on the best idea, and the winner received cash money. Now, if you was virtual, you may have received some virtual dollars, but if we did this in, per in person, Somebody got paid. And what happened? How did that come about? It's because we voted with our dollars. We took individual dollars and made a decision about whichever idea we thought was the most possibly profitable or the most plausible, most doable concept. That's the one we went with. And this process is called Ujama. Ujama is a Swahili word, which means Cooperative economic. What does Ujama mean? Cooperative economics. That's what happens on Wall Street. They put money together, they invest in the business, and when that business prospers, everyone who invested in that business prospers. You're going to learn more about that as we move forward. So, this week, you got to show me the money. Show me the money. Tell me this what is money? That's the first question. You, re you do realize now that money has no intrinsic value, which means the money in and of itself is not something you can actually use. It's only value lies in what you can exchange it for. You don't eat money. You can't clothe yourself with money. You can spend a lot of money on some clothes, but you can't eat it. It won't keep you warm. It won't keep you healthy. You can't really wipe your butt with it. I mean, I'm just saying, it's only value is what it's exchanged for. So money is a medium of exchange. What is money? It is a medium of exchange. How do you get money? By communicating your value. Remember, all of us were born rich. So we all have value. The challenge comes in if you can learn how to effectively communicate your value, then you can get paid. You can get money. 
how do you communicate your value? By delivering the right message. Now, I'll even go as far as to say delivering the right message at the right time to the right person. But for the sake of brevity, we're going to stick with delivering the right message. That's your verbatim response. When I ask you the question, how do you communicate your value? You say, by delivering the right message. In order to deliver the right message, everyone needs a plan. Whether you're a business, whether you're a solopreneur, which means you're in business by yourself, or whether you're a business owner and you have a team of people that you're in business with. Everyone needs a plan in order to be able to deliver their message to the right people at the right time. What value do you provide to your customers? These are some of the ideas that are in the mind of your customers. These are some of the concepts that you have to communicate through your message. What value do you provide to your customers? How do you go about delivering this value to the marketplace? Why will customers pay you for your value? Why customers will pay you for your value? That's a big question. If you can answer that question, you're almost halfway there. And who are the team players in the process? That is what today's session and lesson is going to be about, understanding how to make and build the right team. So here is our plan. And this is how we're going to go forth through this process, because some of the information that I'm sharing with you through this training is information that it takes adults months to go through. But what I'm doing is, I'm bringing it concisely down into a model that each of us can learn from and all of us can contribute to building. When all of us work on this together, we'll get a lot done in a little time. So here is our plan. We will create the plan together. That's right. We're going to create one plan for a collective enterprise. Now, you can still create your own plan. You can go with the collective enterprise. You can make a plan of your own. You can make a plan with you and your friends. Whatever you want to do is fine with me. But for the sake of this exercise and these lessons, we're going to create a plan together. And you're going to use what you learn from that model, from creating our collective plan to create your own plan. This is what we refer to as the power of Ujima. Ujima. U Ujima is also a Swahili word. And Ujima means collective work and responsibility. What does Ujima mean? Collective work and responsibility. What was Ujama? Oh, you don't forget. Cooperative economics, that's right. Ujama is a Swahili word, which means cooperative economics, it means you put your money together to make something happen. Ujima is collective work and responsibility, which means you put your efforts together and make something happen. Teamwork is essential for success. No one has ever achieved any significant success alone. Even though they may have been the only one that received the trophy, they didn't get there by themselves. The greatest illusion in the world is the illusion of separation. When people think they're separate from one another, then they may feel inclined to think it's okay to have animosity, hatred, or do harm to another human being. But the reality is that we are all a part of one body. That's the body of humanity. And whatever you do for another, you do for yourself. Understanding this, realize that you and your brothers are one. So I want you to start acting like one, cooperating like one, helping each other as one, because the more you do that, the further all of you will get as a collective. So today's example is going to blow your mind. <laughs> okay, let's go with it. Hello, my name is Mosiah Bush, and I'm the CEO of Mos Welcome to Memphis. I live with my mom, my aunt, and my cousin Taylor, and my dog Sparrow, and I make bow ties. I own about 100, 200, 200, 200. 
I love fashion. Dressing up is important to me. If you look good, you feel good too. When he was little, as, as far back as I can remember, and when I allowed him to dress himself, he chose to wear a suit and tie. And over the years, the uh, him wanting to dress up became more and more. He was more and more passionate about looking good. A man wears a necktie because he has to, but a man wears a bow tie because he wants to. This is my status. I like this one. This one speaks to me, and I'm gonna go with it. This is where I make my bow tie. Sewing so tie. <laughs> my mom is there to help me with any problems that comes my way. It's all you require. My favorite designers are Rafael Ray, Calvin Klein, and Damon John. Someday I'm gonna be big like this. Damn, it's a bow tie. I got the idea for most bows because I really like to dress up and I couldn't find any of the bow ties that I really like. So my grandma, she showed me how to sew. We made the first bow tie and mold been going in the sense. <laughs> me and my granny have made 500 ties. <laughs> We started most bows in June of 2011. That's when my mom set up an Etsy shop online, and that's when people could buy online. We've been in business um, almost three years now. Bows has helped the world by creating a better spoke and a, a, a grasp of a confidence and integrity and just intelligence. It's time to make some sales calls. It's important to meet my customers face to face because I want them to know that I care about them and that I appreciate them in what I do. This is H. Walk, and they carry most bows. Got some good stuff for us. Terry is a very cool lady, and she just fun. Come on, let's go to the keyboard. Well, my favorite part of H. Walk is the candy. They have a wide variety. That's a lot. <laughs> This is Kenji Spears style, and they carry most bows. Okay. I've been working with Patty for a long time. Patty is my very special granny. She's called more dogs. More dogs. Cute. Have you ever put bow ties on dogs? Yes, you have. Yeah, we like to promote our product, and what he'll put on his bow tie, I've had I wear his bow ties, and we'll get hula hoops, and we'll go all the way down Cooper and Young hula hoop and showing off and talking about his bow ties. Memphis is a big uh, community, and it just feels good that uh, people that I didn't even know before and I know now are still supporting me. I just tell my mom what I want to do and when I want to do it, but only when it comes to both sides because we always say Mo, Mo is the CEO of Mo's Bows, but Mama is the CEO of Mo. So she always tells me to take out the trash, clean my room, and take this stuff. Mo Mo's. He still mows the lawn. He takes out the garbage. He cleans his room. He likes he likes making eggs and spaghetti. So he's definitely on the right track to you know to be in a a good a good young man. You always have to have help from your family. You have, you have to have support, and without support, you can't do anything. Secret behind most bows is hard work. My whole family helps out with most bows. I like to help make bow ties. Taylor, she uh, stamps the cards. She stamps the business cards, and which is really good for the company because I would have give business cards out if I don't have any business cards. I believe that I can make more happiness by making more bow ties and giving it to them and seeing a smile on their face. Oh, Thank you to Mo Thank you to Mo Okay, what did you learn? That was amazing. I love that. Talk about it, think about it for a second. What did you learn from that experience? What problem did Mo solve? 
what problem did Mo solve? Well, he, he, some people don't like regular ties. He said that people sometimes wear a tie because they have to, but people wear a bow tie because they want to. So that's a whole different style. He also said that when you look good, you feel good. So he's solving a problem emotionally, making people feel better with a bow tie. Who was on his team? He mentioned that you can't do anything alone. Who was on his team? Well, needless to say, his mom was on his team. She helped him with what he needed. His grandma was on his team. She helped him design his first tie. His family was on his team. Even his little sister was helping him make his business cards. His dog was on his team. You put a tie on a dog and it's bound to attract some attention. His customers were on his team because he would sell it to his customers wholesale and they would sell it retail. So they wanted him to succeed. We'll learn more about that later, but look at all the people that were on his team. How did they help him? Everybody helped him by doing the unique part that they had to contribute to the equation. That's how you get a dream team. You get different people with different skill sets and you all work together on one common objective. So how and where can you find a team? Well, you can find a team like Mo did with his family and friends. Well, I don't think he had any friends except for his dog and his customers. But not that he didn't have friends, but working for him and with him were his, his family for the most part. Classmates and neighbors can be your team, such as in this session. You can also have virtual subcontractors. There are services like Fiverr and Upwork or different people online, 99 designs. If you need to get something done, well, you can pay somebody that has a certain skill set to do that thing that you may not want to or may not be skilled to do, but you can pay somebody else to do it. And as you grow your business, you ultimately can have people on staff as employees and or volunteers to help you with your business. So what we're gonna do, this is our exercise for today. We're gonna pick six leaders, six leaders from the group. We need a president and the president should be bold and willing to stand up for other people. We need a marketing director. He should be curious or she should be curious and willing to ask a lot of questions. We need a sales manager, somebody that is persuasive and likes to meet new people. We need a production manager, somebody that's able to set goals and meet deadlines, get stuff done on time. We need a secretary, somebody who's organized and has good handwriting. And we need a treasurer, somebody that's good at counting and explaining math problems. I mean, if they're handling your money, you definitely want them to be able to count, I would think. Each one of these positions will answer six of the key questions that are essential in order for you to actually put together a business plan. And I'm going to walk through these six questions. I'm going to give this information to you in a way that if you repeat it, you will remember it. There are only six basic questions to a business plan. And this is how you can remember it. I keep six honest serving men. They told me all I knew, their names were what and where and when and how and why and who. Now that's a short poem by Rudyard Kipling. You need to look that up. You need to memorize it because that's gonna help you remember the questions that you need to answer in any plan in order to communicate the right message. The way you get paid, the way you make money is by communicating your value. To communicate your value, you have to deliver the right message. These questions help you craft the right message. I keep six honest serving men. They taught me all I knew. Their names were what and where and when and how and why and who. Now I'm gonna show you how this applies to our team. One leader for each question. Now the leader can have a committee of his own. So if there's six people that are team leaders and you got 12 or 24 people in a group, each leader can have people on his committee to help him answer that question. <coughs> so the president answers, 
the what section of the business plan? Marketing director answers, the where section of the business plan. Sales manager answers, the how section of the business plan. Production manager answers, the when section of the business plan. And a secretary answers, the who section of the business plan. Lastly, the treasurer answers, the why section of the business plan. Now I'm gonna give you some instructions. And when you follow the instructions I'm going to give you, it will give you a more detailed breakdown of how do you go about answering these questions. And we will go over this information in more detail as well. But if you want to get a jump start and be somewhat per with personal initiative, you can get started and be ahead of the game. So this is your assignment. Go to mbkcontest.com if you haven't already done it. Follow the instructions. Let me say that again. Go there and follow the instructions and get ready to win because somebody out of at least 10 schools is going to get $2,500 in business development funding and it could be you. So this is the MBK Entrepreneurship Segment 2 because you're the dreamer. Let's make it a reality. Robert Nelson, signing off.